In this video, you learn Warren Buffett Stock Market Crash 2020, Warren Buffett isn't buying anything right now. Let us get started. This is Wealth Secrets TV. Don't forget to subscribe, and click on the bell icon so that you will not miss anything. 1. Managers should only eat what they kill. In 1991, Berkshire Hathaway was the brown shoe company, which was HH in a letter to shareholders earlier this year, Buffett shared some of the reasons for this. Buffett recognizes that shoes are heavy industry, and H.H. Brown was profitable. He preferred that the CEO of the company, Frank Rooney, stay. And I certainly liked that the, more unusual, executive compensation plan he wrote for the company, warms my heart. At H.H. Brown, each executive receives $7,800 per year, which equates to about $14,500 today, in exchange for a stock option or guaranteed bonus, plus a percentage of the company's profit after a decrease in shares, it was. In other words, each manager received a portion of the company's profits minus the amount of capital spent to generate those profits. As a result, HH all of bronze managers had to take on the owner position and appreciate it if the project deserved any possible results. Buffett firmly believes that this type of, eat the kill, philosophy refers to executive compensation. Buffett successfully defended the leadership position of Coca-Cola, the largest position in Buffett's portfolio, which has a 6.2% stake in cut, excess, executive compensation plans. Image Source, Value Walk. For Buffett, bonuses can only motivate people beyond their mere essence if they are closely linked to personal success at the place within the organization where the manager is responsible. For Buffett, executive compensation plans too often reward managers for higher profits or higher company stock prices. Former leaders often produce the results. Berkshire has an incentive system that gives enforcement officers strategic responsibilities to achieve their goals, Buffett wrote in 1985. Berkshire stocks are growing, falling, or even remaining. Likewise, we believe that average productivity does not provide any particular benefit, also as reserves increase. Quote. At Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett implements a personalized reward system that rewards managers for their behavior, even if department heads do not receive intuitive rewards when the overall business goes wrong. 2. Do not give managers options for shares as a reward in 2000 the dot-com bubble burst. Businesses around the world are closed, and investors lose thousands, if not millions, of their holdings. At the same time, many CEOs of companies that have gone bankrupt or suffered huge losses, and shareholders have also suffered, have received compensation levels. By the spring of 2001, Cisco shareholders had lost 28.6% of their investment, but CEO John Chambers had $177 million. Direct Money at AOL, where shareholders lost 54.1%, CEO Steve Keyes paid $164 million in compensation. At companies like Citigroup, Tyco, and CMGI, CEOs make hundreds of dollars, and shareholders suffer significant losses. John Chambers, CEO of Cisco in Davos in 2010. Source. World Economic Forum Buffett took over these leaders in a 2001 letter to shareholders. Charlie Munger, Vice President of Burger Shaw Hathaway, and I, shareholders, businessmen, supporters, and other leaders of these disasters have left tremendous wealth. Buffett has some problems with the CEO's practice of awarding stock options as compensation. First, there is a dilution problem. The granting of new options will increase the number of shares in the company, reduce the existing shareholder base, and reduce the value of the current shareholder's shares. This means that Buffett's exploitation is less valuable than in the past, contrary to Buffett's belief that management should try to increase the value of the company's stock rather than increase it. Second, corporate waste is possible when leaders who better understand the value, or lack thereof, of their business can seize opportunities for their unjust wealth. Buffett writes, many of these CEOs have encouraged investors to throw away their shares by buying them with their concealment method. Unfortunately, I see these business leaders as a bunch. Finally, a stock selection plan allows companies to reward employees with massive compensation without proper accounting. Companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars distributing unlimited shares to employees who can do so fraudulently without disclosing that value to shareholders. In a 2018 letter, Buffett wrote, 
Executives sometimes say that compensation based on their shares should not be considered an expense. What else, what is a gift from the shareholders? Quote. His Berkshire Hathaway company, Buffett, follows the basic rules of 1956. As he wrote in 2001, he promised his shareholders that he and his vice president, Charlie Munger, had said, cash compensation, stock rewards will make the difference better than you or just take, limited options. Quote. I also hold over 99% of my net worth in Berkshire. My wife and I have never sold shares and have no intention of doing so. Quote. Your action. 3. Buy stocks as an owner, not as a speculator when many investors buy stocks, they are price obsessed and always check their checks to see if there is a profit or loss of money. From Buffett's perspective, the stock market must follow the same rigorous analysis as buying a business. If you don't mind keeping it for 10 years, don't even think about 10 minutes, he wrote in a 1996 letter. Instead of worrying about pricing or recent security measures, Buffett says he buys from companies that produce good, competitive, strong products that deliver consistent long-term benefits. In short, buy shares in the company you want to get. Whenever Charlie and I buy shares from Berkshire insurance company Atereye, we are dealing with a transaction as if we were buying a private company, he wrote in a 1987 letter. View sale time or price. Quote. Purchase of investments in the insurance company Geico, which was subsequently acquired. This is the best selling purchase so far. Geico is what Buffett wanted as an investor. He had a great brand. He had a strong and reliable management team. And when he first visited the company's headquarters in 1951, he saw a huge price advantage that the company receives from industry giants. The combination of all these elements is started. In 1951, Buffett decided to invest over half of his capital in Geico. Its profits had skyrocketed in a bear market since the mid-1970s when Geico competed. In 1995, he owned half of the company and agreed to buy the rest of the company later. Warren Buffett praised CIO Ruth Simpson of Geico from 1979 to 2010 and said earlier that it would be convenient to replace Simpson with Berkshire Hathaway. Image Source, Wikipedia. We decided to pay $2.3 billion to half of the company that we did not have. It is expensive. But he grew, and the business remained excellent for the same reasons that it became popular in 1951. This gives us full ownership of the company. Buffet wrote in his 1995 letter. Perhaps no other investment, like the 50-year investment in Geico, is better than Buffett's ideal. Buffett acknowledges that those who invest in a speculative company that may benefit at some point will not be against this type of investment. He prefers to invest in companies that have already achieved success, even if their success underestimates the market and is likely to succeed in the long run. This belief allows him to buy a large share of companies to invest in when the overall market is depressed. Buffett was supposedly left without the Geico title in the mid-1970s. He would take a step forward if the recession continued, and the health benefits were already realized. However, from a management perspective, Buffett took advantage of the recession as an opportunity to accumulate a large share of the company. In 2013, Buffett reported that Geico raised $73 billion in Berkshire Hathaway in a year. Excellent performance for the year for Buffett for $2.3 billion. 4. Don't ignore the value of intangible assets The company owns tangible assets, factories, capital, inventory, and intangible assets such as reputation and brand. For Buffett, this intangible asset is very important to value investors. But he doesn't always believe in it. He admitted that he was in the service of tangible assets at the start of his investment career. I was taught to prioritize real estate, factories, and equipment and avoid companies whose value is heavily dependent on financial resources. But by 1983, Buffett's attitude had changed. The main reason is the success of one of his favorite activities at the time, C Confectionery. By the early 1970s, C's was able to generate around $2 million after tax each year in just $8 million in net tangible assets, including all credits. For a chain of stores like C, this far exceeds expectations. The reason is that, according to Buffett, the company has a subjective competitive advantage because, it has a global ranking of consumers based on a myriad of practical experiences with both. This means not only the products but also the personnel. 
Berkshire Hathaway acquired C and reached $13 million in 1982, after taxing only $20 million in net tangible capital assets. When Berkshire Hathaway or someone else buys a business, they pay a premium for the business's assets. This price represents the economic credit of the company. When Berkshire bought C for the first time, they paid a small sum to pay C because it could get 25% of the factory's net property, equipment, and after-tax taxes in the confectionery produce. However, a few years later, C was getting 65% of net tangible assets after tax. Berkshire pays a small purchase premium to account for the company's subjective advantage over other confectionery products. Still, after a few years, these profits increase, further increasing the reliability and profitability of C's activities. Make. And that's the kind of profit Buffett is starting to see protected against inflation. During inflation, it is generally accepted that companies with large capital resources have the highest level. According to them, with their factories and equipment, they have been able to cope better with the market's impacts due to a general decline in purchasing power and rising costs. Buffett said, richer companies tend to have lower returns and often provide less capital to meet the inflationary needs of the business that already exist. Thanks to C's success, Buffett is doing better in an inflationary environment. Companies with relatively few tangible assets and mixed intangibles with strong values have lower hedging costs and higher inflation. I know that. Return to existing capital. During inflation, Good intentions are always a gift to offer, he concluded. Market volatility. 5. Ignore short-term changes in stock prices for unqualified investors, the price is everything, buy cheap, sell expensive. There's also Wall Street, which says, you can't go there, you can't make a profit. Buffett does not entirely agree with this approach and believes that this saying may be the foolishness of all Wall Street statements. And when it comes to the Berkshire portfolio, it's clear that stock prices are one of the least important factors to consider when deciding to buy or sell stocks for a particular company. For Buffett, the most important thing is the activity of the company and its core values. This is because stock prices on certain days are largely determined by the wants of the market, Buffett's metaphor for the movement of the largest stock market mercury. However, Mr. Market goes out every day and appeals to the price at which you buy your interest or sell yourself. Unfortunately, the poor have emotional problems that cannot be cured, said Buffett. I wrote in his 1987 letter. For Buffett, investors are fine if they can ignore Mr. Market and his emotional state. Instead, see if the invested company is profitable, pay dividends to investors, keep product quality high, etc. Ultimately, Buffett said the market would win and appreciate these companies. In the short term, a market is a voting machine, he wrote, quoting Benjamin Graham, but in the end it's a balance, he writes. 6. Fear if others are greedy and greedy if others are afraid after the 2007-2008 financial crisis, most economic doctrines fell into an efficient market assumption. The belief that asset prices reflect a fair market assessment of the information available in this regard time. Defended the idea that prices were set fairly when it became clear that some of the world's largest banks consistently underestimated the risk inherent in traded assets. After the crisis, individual and institutional investors released shares in many weak and strong companies. But Buffett went shopping for himself and even published a passionate New York Times article called, Buy an American, about billions of dollars spent on discounted stocks. Buffett is moderate in an efficient market and a reasonable player. Reflecting on the financial crisis, its consequences, and its benefits, he wrote in 2017. The markets are generally rational, but sometimes we do strange things. We need a lot of intelligence, a degree in economics or knowledge of Wall Street terminology to take advantage of the opportunities offered, a he declared. No one. Quote. Buffett believes that the markets are generally efficient. This is why he generally recommends looking for exchanges and, calculating, market revenues, it is almost impossible to try to beat the wisdom of the price crowd. Buffett also believes that there are historic milestones in the world where all of this has been overcome. Natural disasters, accidents, and times when epidemics and rationalism emerge out the window. He continued. Instead, investors should be able to ignore the mafia's fears and enthusiasm and focus on a few simple basics. 
The desire to appear unprecedented or unpleasant is also important. Buffett said that in times of uncertainty or chaos, experienced investors should continue to take into account the company's core values, seek out companies that can maintain a long-term competitive advantage, and invest in their condition of spirit. I believe him. As he writes, if investors can do it, they naturally tend to go in the opposite direction of the herd, only fear when others are greedy and greedy, in 2004 he said the reason is simple. If others are afraid, prices will fall, but prices will likely only stay low in the short term. In the long term, Buffett is optimistic about any company that produces superior products, has good management skills, and offers extraordinary competitive advantages. Buffett is said to have raised $10 billion in 2013 by saving for struggling U.S. companies such as General Electric, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America during the 2008 financial crisis. 7. Save your money in peacetime so that you can buy more during the war in 1973, Buffett made one of the most successful investments in the Washington Post. At that time, the bet was worth between $400 and $500 million. The tickets are valued at $100 million but in the United States. The United States of America. For Buffett, it's a buy signal. We can buy over 1.7 million shares at a price of $10 million. The basic idea here is simple. Save money when it's cheap and actively use it when it's high. In 1973, the country was still under the control of the stock market crash that started in January. This slow decline created a two-year bear market. Dow Jones started in 1020 in 1973 and 616 until the end of 1974. The Coca-Cola title, one of Buffett's major titles, went from 149 from $75 to $44.50. In contrast, Buffett believes that companies whose fundamentals don't change are grossly underestimated. Image of the economic crisis of 1973. One of the biggest stock market declines in history began in 1973, especially in Britain. Image source, Paul Townsend. Washington Post shares declined after the Buffett acquisition. In late 1974, the Post officially lost to Berkshire Hathaway from $10.6 million to $8 million. However, Buffett was convinced that the business's fate was going to change, and he knew that even if the situation got worse, he had increased the business at a high price. When Jeff Bezos obtained documents in 2013, 1.7 million Buffett shares were valued at approximately $1.01 billion, with profits of over 9,000%. Every 10 years, dark clouds will fill the economic sky and golden rain for a short time, Buffett wrote in 2016. With a teaspoon. Investment strategy. 8. Look for companies to reinvest their growing income Warren Buffett is known for his love of dividend payers, and Berkshire Hathaway has made a lot of money for payers shareholders. Buffett said in a letter to shareholders in 2019 that the top 10 shares of Berkshire Hathaway had generated a dividend of approximately $3.8 billion compared to the previous year. But perhaps more than paying dividends, Buffett values the business practices of reinvesting increasing profits. Among Berkshire Hathaway's top 10 companies, retained and reinvested income is more than double the income paid by dividends. In 2019, Berkshire Hathaway's capital, compared to the revenues of these companies, including Apple, Coca-Cola, and American Express, was valued at more than $8.3 billion. As Buffett points out in his 2019 letter, the amount of retained earnings is not always accepted by U.S. investors. Until 1924, John Maynard Keynes wrote about the power of corporations to keep a party to reopen their business, rather than giving shareholders all the profits, and thus creating compound interest management. Support healthy industrial investments. Quote. Today, this idea is the basis of Operation Berkshire Hathaway. In Berkshire, Charlie and I have focused on income for a long time, Buffett wrote. His belief in the strength of his income stems from the idea that the Berkshire investment firm must have three characteristics. They get a good return on the net for the capital they have to work on. They are led by competent and honest managers, available at fair price. If a business is priced well, performs well, and returns enough capital, Buffett believes he should be encouraged not only to invest in dividends but also to reinvest in profits. 
sometimes that means investing in a new plant and growing, but it can also mean buying Buffett's preferred stock, as Berkshire's share of the company's future profits grows. While this doesn't work in the short term, Buffett believes investing in businesses in general is the right long-term strategy. Unfortunately, the discount does not give you anything. The Berkshire awards of these 10 companies may not be as organized as many other interests. In general, our investment. It is particularly important to add value to Berkshire. Quote. 9. Don't invest in businesses that are too complicated to understand. When Berkshire Hathaway announced it would get $1 billion from Apple in 2016, it surprised many longtime company watchers, not because of Apple's business model or share price, but because Buffett had long claimed that he did not include enough technology to invest in the business. Technology. They were right to be wary. A few weeks later, Buffett confirmed that he was one of his last managers hired to pull the trigger on the deal. In a 1986 letter to shareholders, Buffett described various aspects that he and Munger were looking for in a new company, including, a simple company. He even said, if there is a lot of technology, we will not understand it. Specifically, the Buffett model indicates that it is not appropriate to invest in companies where it is impossible to predict whether a company will have a long-term competitive advantage more than 20 years or more. Bitcoin symbol in May 2018, Buffett criticized Bitcoin buyers for, just hoping the next person pays more, for assets with no intrinsic value. You don't invest, when you do, you speculate. In his 2007 letter, Buffett expanded his thinking on the type of business he chose to invest in. A truly extraordinary business must have a strong, trench, that protects an excellent return on investment, he writes, the dynamics of capitalism will ensure that competitors will repeatedly attack the, blocks, of any business that produces high profits. Quote. When Buffett invests, he doesn't see the company's innovation potential or, in a vacuum, its growth potential. He is looking for a competitive advantage. The key to investing is not to assess the impact of an industry on society or its level of growth, he wrote, but rather determines a company's competitive advantage. And, above all, the longevity of that profit. Quote. In 1999, when Wall Street analysts praised almost every dot-com on the market, Buffett saw a repeat of the previous time, the car's invention. When a car was first discovered, naive investors might think that virtually every fleet of cars is guaranteed to be successful. At one time in the United States, there were 2,000 makes of private cars. If you had predicted in the early years of the car how the industry would develop, you would say, this is the road to wealth, wrote Buffett. So what did we get in the 90s, church? After the never-ending corporate massacre, we ended up in three American automakers. He noted that the aviation industry has also experienced the same thing. While technological innovation is even more impressive than automotive innovation, it can be said that the industry has disappointed most of its investors. In 1992, all airlines produced in the United States made no profit. The conclusion to the dot-com title was simple at the time, there would be winners and most would lose. Choosing the right winner requires understanding which companies create a competitive advantage that will be protected for very long periods. During the dot-com boom, this meant understanding how the network infrastructure would evolve in the decades to come, an impossible task for observers at the time. Buffett prefers simplicity, as he explained in his 1996 letter. Your goal as an investor should only be to buy a fair share in an easy-to-understand company at a fair price, whose income will almost certainly be much higher in 5, 10, and 20 years. As for the lieutenants, Buffett hired Todd Combs and Ted Wescheler in 2016 and allowed them to take office without consulting him. While Buffett himself may feel uncomfortable with a company like Apple, he acknowledged that others might have stronger beliefs about the potential of this future investment. 10. Invest in non-sex businesses that produce products that people need. In a letter to shareholders in 1996, Buffett recanted from the 1896 Coca-Cola shareholder report, which stated that although the company's superior products remained the same when the company laid out a plan to grow over 100 years old, I admired what I protect. Buffett uses the example of Coca-Cola to explain Charlie Munger's most important investment principles and philosophies. What can we have? photo of a Coca-Cola distributor Coca-Cola products has not changed significantly over the past 100 years. 
This is how Buffett chooses investors and consumers. As citizens, Charlie and I welcome the change. We must stress that new ideas, new products, and innovative processes help improve the standard of living in our country. This is certainly a good thing, said Buffett stated in his 1996 letter. But our reaction to the fermentation industry as investors is very similar to our attitude towards space exploration. We praise our efforts but prefer to skip the trip. Buffett continues to discuss the Berkshire portfolio, which he and Munger believe includes all companies that don't expect significant changes in major industries. The portfolio of McDonald's, Wells Fargo, Gillette, American Express and Walt Disney Buffet seems to be a safe and universal combination for some investors. Still, it is based on a philosophy of long-term success. We are looking for jobs that we think will be very competitive in 10 to 20 years, he writes. The rapidly changing industrial environment may offer a great opportunity for victory, but it takes away the confidence that we are looking for. It's not just Buffett's philosophy. This is the philosophy of his favorite companies, including Coca-Cola. When Coca-Cola first appeared, it turned into a relatively inexpensive brand product, syrup. For over 100 years, this brand has grown to include diverse human emotions and aspirations. Buying products and selling brands has long been the key to the company's success. Since 1886, Coca-Cola has made huge, lasting profits. Buffett turned Berkshire Hathaway into an empire, bought a boring business, and sold dividends that always paid off, just like Coca-Cola built an empire by buying syrup and selling its lifestyle. 11. Buying stocks is often the best way to use corporate money. This is one of the biggest stock discounts since Apple started buying its stock in 2012. Earlier this year, on January 18, Apple set a record of $43.5 billion in share buybacks. It was announced in May that an additional $100 billion would be spent on acquiring Apple shares. Some argue that the company was not imaginative and couldn't find a more productive way to spend those billions. A number like Buffett, a simple and insignificant number focused on intrinsic value, should prevent the cost of the energy of capital to buy back stocks. Instead, he was happy to be able to increase, in particular, 5% of the company's shares to 6% or 7%. Buffett is a more aggressive takeover than many other neutral investors and watchers in the stock market. At the 2004 Berkshire Hathaway conference, he said, when a stock can buy below its market value, it's probably the best way for the company to spend money. Apple headquarters in Cupertino. Apple's repayment plan was announced in the spring of 2018 and is worth $100 billion. The United States has the most redeemed stocks in history. Photo source, Wikipedia. The classic criticism of buyout is to buy stocks and raise the stock price with the money that companies have to spend on research and development and product improvement. This is an artificial enhancement of the tickets that does not reflect the organic growth in value of the company. Buffett opposes executives who buy shares of the company to do so, or simply because they have the money to boost profits, but buy dump stocks. I believe so too. If a company considers its shares to be undervalued and repurchases them based on the company's initial valuation, Buffett will increase the holdings of each shareholder as follows. Backquote backquote if Charlie and I think investors' stocks are undervalued, they want managers to use part of their earnings to increase their property in Berkshire, he said in 2018. However, when a company acquires its own shares, the company by definition exceeds the costs if they are valued above the intrinsic value of the shares. In addition, a company that tends to overpay anything, whether by buying a stock or making a new acquisition, is not a good way for sensitive shareholders. Buying $1.10 bills is not a good deal for the locals, Buffett wrote in 1999. For Buffett, the most common culprit is an administrator who decides to buy a certain amount of shares within a certain period of time. For Buffett, there is no difference between the CEO announcing this type of stock repayment plan and the individual investor who says, backquote backquote I will be buying X Berkshire Hathaway shares for the next Y months, regardless the price. Investment strategy he thought it was insanely stupid. For Buffett, it's always, buy because it's cheap, not just because. Investment value. 12. I think the business is pretty good, so don't invest. Much of Buffett's business distrust was due to a series of mediocre buying and investing made early in Berkshire Hathaway's life. 
an important example, discussed in detail in a letter to shareholders in 1979, is Wombeck Mills, Manchester, New Hampshire. Buffett decided to buy Wombeck Mills a few years ago because the price was so low. The price is less than the active capital of the business. So Buffett, bought a lot of cars and real estate at the same price. Smaller, he wrote in 1979. This seems to be an extraordinary affair. But despite the attractiveness of the deal, the acquisition was a mistake by Berkshire Hathaway. No matter how hard the business tries to change a difficult business, it has failed. The textile industry has just entered a recession. Finally, Buffett wrote in 1985. According to a recent Business Week article, 250 textile factories have been closed since 1980. Their owners know me. I don't know the information I don't have. They run more business. Objective. Finally, Buffett's pleasure for low-cost companies and the problem is that some investors have higher positions in the business, while Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway have relatively smaller positions in more expensive companies. That means you can find yourself. At Berkshire, we would rather have a non-dominant but substantial share of a large company than 100% of our business. We have a partial interest in Hope Diamond rather than having all the stones. Better, he wrote in 2014. 13. Don't invest just because you expect the business to grow according to some fundamental analysis of the company, Buffett is known to support the value of the underrated value investing paradigm, such as dividend yields, returns, and book price ratios. Buy company shares. The personal formulation of Buffett's strategy is to find amazing businesses at reasonable prices, instead of finding mediocre businesses at low prices. His understanding of investing in value does not mean that Buffett is skeptical of growth, but believes he has much greater potential for growth than they do. This means that he avoids investing in the business. But Buffett points out in his 1992 letter that investors are interested in value, and that those interested in growth are viewed as inconsistent. Growing investors are looking for companies capable of above average growth, analysts said. A growing business as an investor may seem expensive today, but it is doable if it grows faster than expected. Value investors, on the other hand, may overlook the potential for growth based on fundamental analysis. Buffett rejects this contrast and proudly states that, growth in value is combined with investment. Most analysts think they have to choose between two approaches generally considered to be opposite, value or growth, he wrote in a 1992 letter. We think this is a confusing idea, obviously I was involved a few years ago, improvement is always a factor in calculating values and is variable. These impacts and impacts can be negative or even positive, he added. The Buffett investment value means, finding at least enough value to justify the payment. Evaluating a large business is not the same as investing in it because you think it will grow and you realize it because you can expect healthy growth in the long run. He does it. I love it. 14. Do not use inventory for shopping. One of the worst mistakes of Buffett's investors occurred when they acquired Dexter Shoe Company shares in 1993. This was one of the first major acquisitions for Berkshire Hathaway in the process of transferring maximum revenue through the acquisition of another company. Before that, Berkshire Hathaway made a lot of money investing in stocks. Using Dexter Shoe, Buffett chose the worst company to help with this transition. Within a few years, the relatively expensive Dexter Shoes came off the market with a series of cheap imports. Within a few years, the company's prices have reached almost zero. What we see as a long-term competitive advantage disappears a few years later, he wrote in a 2007 letter, saying it was the most difficult offer of his career. The town of Dexter is in recession after production by the Dexter Shoe Company ceased in 2001. According to Bloomberg, it has not been restored since 2017. Image Source, Wikipedia. What makes this business worse for Buffett is that he trades Berkshire shares instead of cash like almost every other offer made through Berkshire Hathaway. By using Berkshire stocks, I made this mistake much worse. With this milestone, Berkshire shareholders spent $3.5 billion, not $400 million. We offer 1.6% of open transactions which are currently worth $220 billion. Dot. Buy. However, buying Dexter shoes is bad, but buying a company with Berkshire stocks worsens the problem. Instead of spending money, 
Buffett has spent some of his business well beyond the S&P 500 over the next decade. Each year, his Dexter shoe purchase is more and more retrospective, massaging his wound with salt. Because of my mistake, Berkshire shareholders did more than they received, even with the Bible's agreement, they did not have a chance to buy a business. Today I want to be better prepared for a colonoscopy than publishing the title Berkshire, he wrote later. I hope you like this video? Click on the like, share, and subscribe if you like this video let us know if you like or dislike it in the comment below, and we will be glad to hear your feedback. Thank you, we love you.